Welcome to another edition of Swim Easy Speed. My name is Tim Floyd. I am a longtime swim coach and triathlon coach. And uh, today we are going to look at uh, a video of J.D. Tremblay. He's uh, been in uh, the Woodlands for about a month. He's been doing a lot of local races. Uh, he came down uh, training with the team. He's in from Canada. And um, he's training ultimately for the Epic Deca. And I didn't know what the Epic Deca was when he first told me about it, but it is 10 Ironmans in 10 days in Hawaii on six different islands. So you've got to manage all the logistics of going from island to island and completing an Ironman in a day and getting everything ready, go to the next island and, you know, kind of rinse, wash, and repeat. So, um, yeah, that's uh, that's what he's going to be doing for uh, it starts in about uh, in about two weeks. So what we did was he decided to um, do a little video analysis of his swim stroke. So you guys could check it out. He just did Ironman Texas this last weekend. He went 104 in the swim just over 11 hours uh, overall. And it was more kind of a training day for him. And um, yeah, so. We looked at his stroke. The Ironman Texas was with a wetsuit, and we'll just take a look and see where we uh, where we kind of thought we could probably get a little bit more efficiency uh, out of his stroke, out of his swim in the water. So here we go. I'll I'll just let it run for a little bit, and uh, you guys can check it out. Okay, so that's kind of when he first got in the pool, that's what his stroke looked like. That's what we were working with. And so, you know, I mean, one of the things that I was like to talk about with everyone when we were first getting in for the very first time is just the basics. So why you want to be really long on the water versus kind of at an angle. And long on the water, the longer you are, the longer that water line is, the more distance you're going to be able to get per stroke. Um, it puts you in a much better position to really lever the water and then just reduces the amount of drag you have. So when you're more of an angled position, you know, you shorten the water line. This is all drag that you've created. And then, you know, effectively, you know, if we're looking to kind of lever the water, we've really moved that whole uh, lever point more out in front of us. And so you're not able to use as many of, uh, of the really big muscles in your lats and your back, uh, your pecs, all in conjunction with the one another to really lever the water. When you are in that position of minimal amount of drag, maximum amount of distance per stroke, which is what we're trying to get to. So you can see, you know, his hips and um, his shoulders and, uh, are, and his head are much higher than his hips and his feet. When we go to kind of the underwater shot, you can see kind of what that does. So right there is kind of the best example. That arm comes in, elbow drops, wrist is above the elbow. He's just pressing, pressing, pressing down. Doesn't really start pulling himself forward till about there. So, you know, all of that is effectively, you know, if we think of ourselves as that teeter-totter again in the water, if we're pressing down at the front of the stroke... Okay, so that's going to go up. That means the back end is going to go down. Now, what it does is it takes us really out of position to lever the water. Um, you know, by the time you get to really that meaty part of the stroke, you're really already having to kind of, um, you're out of position to really lever the water and you're having to recover. So, you know, he went 104, and so basically the gap between kind of the top of his butt and the water line Um you know, he's looking at, you know, that's probably 10 minutes right there, ultimately. Um, if he can get that up eventually. And a lot of that's core engagement, body position, strength, um, training to go faster. Speed has a, a pretty big, is a pretty big component of it. The other thing is, you know, he's really looking forward right here. You'd really like to see him kind of look down again. Um, again, we're getting back to, so if here's his waterline. Kind of there's his head. 
So if his head is going up, if he's lifting his head up, um, that back end is going down. And for triathletes, this is one of the things that you want to really keep in mind is when you're doing an open water swim and you're sighting, you're picking that head up, you really want to make sure it's really, really important to get that head back down in the water as quickly as possible and really think about bringing that back end up. So don't continue to look forward. Just look, try to look back down again to get everything um, uh, flatter on the water and longer. So here's a little bit more of what it looked like in terms of uh, the back of a stroke, kind of the back end. And then here was where we kind of settled on working today. So the biggest thing is you can see right here, you know, he's putting a lot of the momentum is, is going forward. But some of it, as we've talked about before, is going up and off and to the right. He's got to correct for that somewhere. So we're in this really unstable environment, dynamic environment. It's always changing, the water. And what we're trying to do is just provide our body with this really, really stable platform to work off of. So when we start putting in some instability into the stroke, typically what you'll see is you can see it right there. So you can see his feet come way, way apart. So there's a foot and there's a foot. Um, and that's all just to balance, okay, to correct for, to bring some balance back into his body for that. And so what we figured was, you know, we could we could get a lot of efficiency just by making sure that he was aware of getting that to move forward. So we just started off with the, that PVC pipe drill. Just put that PVC out in front, um, grab it. And, you know, he struggled with it a little bit first. Um, you know, it's, it's basically something that, um, you know, we're not used to doing. <laughs> He's done 100,000 strokes at least with doing it the other way. And, you know, the, the funny thing about the brain, uh, which is where this movement resides, brain and nervous system, um, the funny thing about it is the brain is 3% of our body weight, 20% of our uh, resources, so oxygen and glucose. So it's this hugely energy-intensive organ that's always looking for homeostasis. So always looking for what's the easiest thing to do. I don't have to kind of call on additional resources. And, you know, anytime you decide then to change the movement you're making, which in the long run is going to be, for, for instance, with JD right here, much more efficient. Um, your brain is going to say, man, what are you doing? That's just wrong. And it's going to feel wrong. Your, brain's, your brain and body are going to signal, this is wrong. This is hard. Um, you shouldn't be doing this. And if you're trying to change the stroke, if you're getting those kind of cues from your brain and body, um, that's when you know you're probably doing something right. So um, here we go. And then here was kind of the final swim. Again, back at 130, 100 pace in the endless pool. And you can see, um, you know, he's driving more of that stroke forward. You know, we still have to work on the feet a little bit and trying to get a little bit more balance in the stroke. But he even reported that, you know, this kind of movement right here, this stroke right here, at 130 a pace, which is what we started out at in the first video, um, felt a lot easier, and he was certainly much more relaxed. So um, that was what we were trying to do and why we were trying to do it. So now he's just got to go apply it in practice over and over and over again until it becomes a movement he doesn't have to think about anymore. And his brain, nervous system, body are all like, oh, this is the most efficient way for us to do it. And then on the overall, this is the most efficient way for him to do it. So... That was what we covered today. I hope uh, um, you guys enjoyed it. And we're all going to be cheering for JD in about uh, about two weeks. The Epic Deca. I'll put um, some uh, links to places where you can follow him. There's also going to be a podcast interview that I did with him so you can hear a little bit more in detail about kind of how he got into ultra endurance sports, um, why he's doing all this, um, and... Uh, yeah, it, it was an interesting talk. So thanks again, as always, for tuning in. And please like, share, comment below. And I am always happy to answer questions. Thanks again.